In this video, you'll learn how to create a new ADO.NET data source in your WinForms project and how to bind the grid control to it via the binding source component. You'll see how to sort or filter your data source at the binding source level and how to save the changes back to the database. To bind the DevExpress WinForms data grid control to data using ADO.NET, you can use the data source property in the properties grid window or invoke the control smart tag and open the drop-down list next to the Choose Data Source label. In the drop-down menu, you can select any existing data source or click the Add Project Data Source link to create a new one. Clicking this link will invoke the standard dialog that will guide you through a few simple steps. Yet another way to create a data source is by using the data source wizard that can be invoked by clicking an icon in the control's bottom right corner. Open the wizard and select the very first option, Binding to ADO.NET Type Dataset. Any existing datasets will be displayed on the page's right. As I currently have no existing datasets, I'll click the New Data Source button to create a new one. The wizard will pop up a message box that tells you to rebuild your solution after the data source is created and use the wizard again to bind the control to this dataset. Let's proceed and the same new data source dialog as you saw before appears. On the first page, I select the database source type. On the second page, you can select the required database model, dataset, or entity data model. Binding to Entity Framework Models is described in a separate video. To see it, click here. In this video, let's choose Dataset. The third page asks you to choose the existing data connection or to create a new one. I'll click the New Connection button and choose the Sample AdventureWorks database provided by Microsoft. By clicking Yes in the message box that appears, it adds this database to your solution so it will be easier to modify your data if needed. Next, select data tables you'll need in your application. I'll choose three customers, employees, and products. For each table, you can uncheck data fields that you won't need. Click Finish and rebuild your application. Now if you invoke the data source configuration wizard again, you can see that our dataset is now available as an existing data source. Select this dataset and click Next. The next page offers you two options, binding with and without the binding source component. This component simplifies design time binding and allows you to sort and filter your data before it's displayed by bound UI controls. So I select the second option and click Next. The final page contains multiple options. The topmost drop-down list lets you select the required data table. The sorting drop-down list enumerates all data fields in the selected data table. Select the required field, and click the up or down arrow to indicate ascending or descending sorting mode and click add. I'll sort my data against the list price column. The sorting rule is now displayed in the area below. You can select the desired rule and click invert to reverse the sorting order or delete to remove sorting by this column. Finally, the filtered text edit allows you to enter a text string that is the filtering condition for your data. Let's filter the view to products that have less than 100 days to manufacture and their description doesn't start with the word aluminum. Click Finish to complete the setup. As I left the Show Generated Code Behind checkbox checked, the wizard will now show the c -sharp file where you can see the auto-generated code. And let's launch the app to see the result. You can see the required data displayed from our dataset. Note that the data is sorted by the List Price column and filtering has been applied as well. If you ever decide to remove or change the sorting and filtering applied in the wizard, select the binding component at design time and look through its properties. For instance, you can change the sort order and the filter string applied previously. To post changes back to the data source, I'm going to handle the focused row changed event and call the adapters update method. This method has four overloads. I'll use the one that takes the data set as a parameter. If I now launch the app and try to modify the days to manufacture column cell, I'll get an exception. This one is raised because after we've excluded key columns from the query, only the select command was generated. In order to push changes, we need to create an update command as well. To do this, you can open the XSD diagram, Select the required data table 
right click it and select configure. In the dialog, click the Advanced Options button and check the Generate Insert, Update, and Delete statements. Click Yes to add the required key columns to the query, and finally click Finish. Now, if you launch the app, modifying row cells does not raise the exception. If you restart the app, you can see all your changes persist. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.